This is my next question. I'll throw it up here as Steve's talking. Um, are there any historical accounts of the life of Moses that are outside of the Bible? Uh, when you're when you're talking about historical accounts, um, there's historical accounts and there are historical account, accounts. So uh, let me let me look something up here real quick. I um, I pulled up a. Uh, uh, something from uh, some of my studies. Uh, this is Moses uh, mentioned by ancient historians. Okay, so um, here's one of the things that you that you need to know about uh, a situation with Moses. Um, when we look at the histories, uh, for example, uh, let, let's just use Egypt. Egyptian history is laid down by the rulers of Egypt. And so when a ruler... Uh, won a battle, like for example, the Battle of Karshemesh, uh, they, would, they would do things like they would um, uh, put um, hieroglyphics on a wall uh, depicting the battle. Uh, sometimes they, they put up uh, stones, like stone pillars that were called stella, and they would have the, the outlines of the battle and you know what the king did and uh, how many how many uh, nations he conquered, and that kind of thing, and that's where we get information, uh, historical information from the times of uh, many of these kings. And so, if a king is having a battle against someone, and he gets his tail whipped, he's not putting that on a wall. Uh, if he if his armies get destroyed. He's not putting that on any kind of stella, and so when you're when you're talking about uh, the history of Moses specifically, you got two sides to that battle, and it was a battle. So you've got the Egyptian side to the battle. They're not saying anything about that, and so we can we can go into Egyptian history and we can see, uh, for example, when uh, Egypt became very weak militarily. And that's what would have taken place after the Exodus because of the destruction of the Egypt, Egyptian army. <clears throat> we can see times when they became very weak uh, militarily and uh, even uh, uh, we can look at situations where there was uh, invasions or uh, infiltrations of groups of people like the Hyksos are an example of that. These are uh, Semitic peoples that, that came from uh, what the Egyptians called Asia, and uh, they were <clears throat> basically a plague to the Egyptians. But so basically, this is what I'm telling you: when you're when you're talking about Egyptian history, you're not going to get a lot on the Exodus, and the reason is because again, Pharaoh got his clock cleaned, and so he's not he's not recording that, and uh, that's not going to be the case. And so the other party to that whole situation was Moses and the Israelis. And so they did write down exactly what happened. And so that's what we've got in the books of Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. And uh, so we have that history. As far as um, historians mention, mentioning uh, Moses and the plagues and uh, that kind of thing, i got a list here. Uh, Hecateus of Abdera, he's a Greek, Greek historian and geographer, and uh, he lived from 550 to 476 BC. It goes, it goes backwards when you're bef before Christ. The numbers get lower. Um, and he uh, references Moses and talks about uh, the, uh, the Exodus. Diodorus uh, Siculus, or Diodorus of Sicily, also uh, mentions Moses. Um, he talks about, uh, look, I'll, I'll give you an example from this guy. <clears throat> it says, uh, uh, he says, the leader of this colony was one Moses, a very wise and valiant man, who after he had possessed himself of the country amongst other cities, built that now famous city, Jerusalem, and the temple there, which is so greatly revered among them. And Moses didn't actually do that. Um, uh, that came later on in, in uh, uh, Israeli history. Moses instituted the holy rites and ceremonies with which they worship God and made laws for the methodical government of the state. He did do that. He also divided the people into 12 tribes, 
which he regarded as the most perfect number because it corresponds to the 12 months within a whole year. There were 12 tribes, but that's not why there were. Uh, Moses also ordered the inhabitants to be careful in rearing their children who were brought up with very little expense. And by that means the Jewish nation has always been very populous. As to their marriages and funerals, he instituted customs for uh, far different from all other people, but under the empires which rose up in later ages, especially during the rule of the Persians and in the time of the Macedonians, who overthrew the Persians through the intermingling of, with foreign nations, many of the traditional customs among the Jews were altered. And you know, it, go, it goes on. And so you see references to Moses in, with Greek historians. Here's another one, Lysimachus of Alexandria. And uh, he uh, pictures the Exodus as being the cause of a bunch of Jews uh, were leprous. They flooded the temples to beg for food resulting in a food shortage in Egypt. Uh, the, the, um, the Jews were driven out, so the lepers were driven out to the wilderness. Some were drowned while the survivors had to experience afflictions in the desert. Uh, and he mentions a certain Moses who advised the surviving lepers to ravage an inhabited country now called Judea. And there they built uh, Hierosola, which means town of temple robbers. And so you see Moses mentioned, you see the Exodus mentioned, it's all, a tw it's all tweaked, but you see them mentioned. Uh, Caramon, Manetho of Sibonitis, Pseudo Manetho, Pompeius Tragus, uh, Artapanus of Alexandria, Publius uh, uh, Cornelius Tacitus, Tacitus is a fam famous Roman historian, Appian Strabo, uh, Demetrius the uh, chronographer, and uh, Eupolamus. Uh, Eupolemus, excuse me, uh, Eupolemus, all, all have histories of Moses and histories of the Exodus. So it is mentioned in other, um, uh, in other uh, histories besides uh, the Bible. Um, Josephus uh, was a Jewish historian. He quotes some of these guys uh, as far as Moses goes. And so again, you have that. If you want more information on this from an archaeological standpoint, and that is one way... <coughs> that you can, um, you can uh, uh, get some confirmations of uh, the stay of the Israelites in Egypt. For example, there are uh, most times when you're looking at clay brick, which is how a lot of the cities were built, um, you have uh, a mixture of clay and straw. And what the straw did was it held the brick together and it made the brick stronger. Well, they have, uh, they've uncovered examples in various places, in specific places in Egypt, where there was no straw in the brick, or there was very little straw. And that corresponds to some of the things that you see in the book of, uh, book of Exodus. Just one example there. Um, there is a book by Hoffmeier, H-O-F-F-M-E-I-E-R, um, that is titled uh, the, uh, Israel in Egypt. And he goes through and he pretty thoroughly gives uh, a number of evidences that there was actually a uh, period of time that the Israelis, Israelis were down in Egypt. And um, he's got some other books that uh, talk about the Exodus, too, and some of the, some of the archaeological evidence we have for that. So. Is that the guy that did a recent thing about the dates of the Exodus in the sense of traditional Egyptology no. has got that wrong. No, Do you Hoff know what I'm talking about? Yeah, though? Hoffmeyer and Kitchen both are, are good, um, uh, ba basically biblical archaeologists, but they, they hold to the classic uh, Egyptian chronology. Okay. Uh, what you're talking about is there, there are some people who are looking, who are re-examining uh, Egyptian chronology. Uh, a lot of this chronology comes from a guy that I mentioned, Manetho. Mm -hmm. Um, and it looks like uh, it's off by uh, a couple of hundred years. Right. Um, one, of, one of the things that you have in um, ancient uh, kingdoms and ancient empires is you can, you can have overlapping regencies is what they're called. And, and so two governments can overlap. And so you have what was called Upper Egypt and you had Lower Egypt and sometimes you had a pharaoh in either one of those. And sometimes those pharaohs are living at the very same time. And so there's, there's, a, there's a move to re-examine Egyptian chronology because it may be off by you know, quite a bit. Yeah. And when you, when you take it and 
uh, you tweak it, and uh, I believe it's right around 200 years. Uh, when you take it and you, and you put it back in the, uh, in, into a context where uh, you shove it back about 200 years, everything starts lining up right. uh, between uh, biblical uh, historical records and Egyptian um, chronology. So that's, in, that's interesting, too. But Hoffmeyer, uh, Hoffmeyer and Kitchen are the two, uh, are two archaeologists that I read uh, that um, bring up uh, some of the evidences of uh, Israel and Egypt. And uh, they, are, they are classic chronologists. So. All right. 